We are going now to have a workshop and an interactive discussion by Yvette Ridley. I'll give you a short synopsis of Yvette's. I can call her Yvette because she is a friend, I hope, yeah. Um, a short biography. Yvette is the commercial attache to the Lesotho Embassy. The description in the program is actually incorrect. Um, she was born in Durban, South Africa, and she studied international politics. She has lived in Johannesburg, Kuala Lumpur, Munich, Regenburg, and now she lives in Berlin. Yvette was headhunted by the Lesotho Embassy, and she has been here since 2007. So I think we can say that Yvette is now settled. She is a part of Berlin. This is not just going to be a lecture entitled um, an, an Workshop on Building an Embassy Strategic Plan, but this is going to be a workshop. So what Yvette will do is speak to you for 15 minutes. We break for a short time. We come back. Then we have a workshop for 15 minutes, et cetera, et cetera. So this is not going to be the type of lecture where you just sit down and listen. You are actually going to take part. So please, can we have a big ICD welcome for my friend, Yvette Wrigley. Thank you. Hi, Mom. <coughs> Hi and welcome everybody. Um, I suppose I would have to stand up here because I need to go onto this laptop. Hi and welcome. I was here yesterday and you were larger, the audience. I noticed that we are a little bit smaller. We were um, hoping that if we start later today that there will be more people, but we can see that um, Berlin is the best place to party. We all know that. <laughs> so welcome and thank you so much for um, waking up and uh, being part of this program. Um, to be honest with you, I need to just check with Norma how long is the whole session? Is it one hour? Um, we're supposed to have one hour, but it's up to you. Okay, that's good. Um, Norma's um, introduced me, who I am. Um, <clears throat> I need to ask you, because I know there's a lot of interns here. Can all the interns pick up their hands? Okay. And then I have family and colleagues here today as well from the Lesotho Embassy. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for missing shopping today. I really appreciate that. Um, we have our colleague also from the Namibian Embassy. She's here, Helena. Thank you for being here. And I have my partner with me today too. Thank you. Um, the reason why I asked about the interns is because of the way we're going to structure today's um, workshop. Okay. <clears throat> How many of you have been to Africa besides the interns? <laughs> okay. Good to know. Now that's good. <clears throat> How many of you are actually actively studying issues or topics on Africa, including the interns? Okay. How many of you are studying politics or cultural relations in Europe? Okay. I just wanted to know my audience, that's all. <laughs> because, of the, because of your workshop, okay, later. Um, the idea behind this workshop today is really to explain to you how embassies, whether we're from Africa, from, from the US, so from the Americas, from Europe, how we actually structure ourselves and how do we get a mandate, um, what actually determines, is that me? What actually determines um, how we plan our work, our day-to-day -day activities, as, especially as government officials. What do we actually do in those countries um, where we posted to or where we based and where we work? As you can see, I'm going to be mainly talking about Lesotho. 
I will also speak about Namibia. Um, I don't want you to, to my, my colleague from Namibia is here in an inofficial capacity today, um, so she can't be quoted. She will be able to hopefully right at the end of your feedback um, be able to answer some questions as well, if there are any for her. Okay, so it's just on Lesotho, it will be on Namibia, and then we also will talk about where we are right now, Germany, Germany's relations. Remember your theme this whole week has been European-African alliances. So we're going to look at that, why we're here and how we form alliances um, in Europe, in particular with Germany. Um, it's very important for you to know that we actually, um, the embassy, before we can actually come up with the plan of what we're going to be doing, we go back to our ministry that has sent sent the officials here to Germany, and that's our Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Relations, and that is to establish, to promote, um, and we always go back to good relations. I don't know if you remember yesterday with Ambassador Mauritius, Mauritian Ambassador, she often came back to this good and friendly way of dealing and talking and handling, whether it is people or institutions, but that is for us the most determining factor. Um, Slovenia, sorry, I'd have forgotten your first name. I will call you country names. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, if you don't mind, if you can read that for me. Yes. Uh, to establish, promote, and maintain good relations between Lesotho and the international community for the advance, advancement and enhancement of Lesotho's prosperity and for the protection of sovereignty, sovereignty mm -hmm. independence, and territorial integrity. Exactly. And, you know, we, when we get our, when we do our mandate, we have to actually reflect on something called Lesotho's policies. All countries have policies, national policies. Lesotho has four main policies that we as an embassy have to go back to, and we also get our mandates from the line ministries, and our most important line ministries then foreign affairs. The, the, um, this embassy, the Lesotho embassy based here in, in Germany, we are very happy to know that we actually have good diplomatic relations between, with Germany, which was established since 1966. Lesotho's mission, first mission, was established in 1966 in Bonn, in those days. It's very, very early for all the African countries to have started a mission. Um, and our relations, as you can see, are based on trust, again, on close relations, and also with the international bodies. Okay, and this comes actually from um, the German ministry. It's a lot of text. I have a copy for you when you break into groups. Um, unfortunately, you're not a big group. Normally what I do, I do pull people out of the audience to read this. So because of the mic, who would like to volunteer to read Lesotho's, um, the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the development cooperation with the Sutu. If oh, we have a volunteer from Zimbabwe, thank you. Germany is highly respected in Lesotho, not least on account of its development cooperation with the country. This focuses on providing aid in the priority area of decentralized rural development which was agreed upon in 2003. Funding has been made available for the main element of development cooperation until February 2000, 2014. Its aim is to establish efficient decentralized institutions, including service providers, a district level, but above all local authorities, to improve services to the poor in particular, and to the poor in particular, and increase political participation in the population. 
This is helping to implement the government of Lesotho's national development strategy, complementing the projects being conducted by other European donors and the EU, with which it is coordinated. Thank you. Yes, and the work, um, the, the, the German government has two offices based in the capital, Maseru, and that is the German International Cooperation in German, the GIZ, the GIZ, and the German Development Services, the DED services in Lesotho. Um, the Lesotho Foreign Affairs has 17 missions throughout the world. And we have, a, we have a mission in Belgium, in Canada, in China, in Ethiopia, Germany, India, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Kuwait, Libya, Malaysia, South Africa, Switzerland, the UK, the UN, and the USA. As you can see, um, it's not a lot of countries. Um, smaller countries do have smaller budgets, and then we do have um, lesser missions. This um, embassy based here in Berlin, we are covering seven countries. We are covering Germany, of course. We are covering Austria. We are covering Poland. The two ladies are from Poland. Um, we are covering France. We're covering Monaco. And we're covering the Vatican and Russia. Have I left it? Perfect, okay. Yeah. Would, do you feel comfortable to speak in English, Poland? Yes? Thank you. Yes, please. Oh, but I think we're such a small audience, it's like we are... Voice is not very loud. Oh, thank you. Mm, German trade with Lesotho is very modest in volume, which means that absolute figures are not very meaningful and may fluctuate strongly from one year to the next. Um, according to the Federal Statistic Office figures in 2008, Lesotho imported goods worth approximately uh, 14 million, 14.9 million US dollars from Germany, while Germany trade and invest figures put the value of export to Germany at some 200,000 US dollars. Uh, Lesotho's main imports from Germany are vehicles, machinery, and pharmaceutical and chemical products. Mm -hmm. Those BMWs and Mercedes Benzes, and especially parts, machineries. Our cultural relations, maybe we hear from Hannah, one of the interns? Over the past years, German music musicians have occasionally given concerts in Maze Maseru, Maseru. Mm -hmm. Maseru, the most recent being that by the German pianist Beatrix Klein in February 2009. In addition, in the first half of 2009, the regional Goethe Institute in Johannesburg set up a German corner containing books, magazines, and other German media items in the library of the Alliance Francaise. Recent cooperation in the area of sports has focused on promoting coaching <coughs> for soccer, soccer and volleyball players, as well as track and field athletes. In higher, in, uh, in higher education, there's cooperation with the country's only university, the National University of Lesotho, through German Academic <coughs> Exchange Service, DRD, scholarships. Thank you. The BMZ's <coughs> mandate, um, BMZ is the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. Today, development cooperation, they say, is seen as, a, as global structural um, and peace policy. Its aim is to resolve crises and conflicts, as you can see, in a peaceful manner. It aims to help ensure that scarce resources are more equitably shared and that our environment is preserved for coming generations and it aims to help reduce global poverty. And in this in turn determines our mandate in this country. It's very important for embassies to look at the host country where we are in and um, work out um, what relations does Germany want to have with us. <coughs> and that determines how we structure our plans. Okay, and based on that, um, Les our vision, the Lesotho Berlin, that's what we also call, call ourselves. The embassies, if we have an embassy in um, Addis, we call uh, the Lesotho Addis, and we are Lesotho Berlin. And our vision, our vision, based on this strategic plan that the embassy has worked on, 
I know it's today we're only going to do this in 15, 20 minutes in the workshop, but we worked as, an, as the embassy and all the colleagues and staff. We did it over more than a month. We did it for a month, and so we, are, uh, we don't expect to have um, detailed results of the countries that you're going to select. And I would, I'm going to advise you to select countries that are not Lesotho, even countries, thank you, even countries that you haven't um, maybe seen or heard of this week, but countries that you're maybe already familiar with. Okay, and our vision statement actually says that to be, we want to be the leading embassy in, in Germany. And, and for us to do this, we say, you know, this implementation of our mission statement. Um, and this is of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs back home, and the relations of the Kingdom of Lesotho. Okay? And our mission statement, this is important to know, our mission statement is to contribute to Lesotho's developmental goals and agenda through promotion, enhancement, and the maintenance of cordial relations between Lesotho and the countries of accreditation and the international organizations in accordance with the relevant conventions, the statutes, and the policies of the Kingdom of Lesotho, as well as the relevant policies in the countries of, of accreditation. You see, we, we go back again to the countries where we are based and the countries we represent, whether they are Poland or France, Russia, we also have to um, take into cognizance their policies and how they deal with us. Okay, so we, um, Norma's call time, I asked her to watch for 15 minutes. I can't believe it took 15 minutes. It's um, important for you then, because of time, we won't do Namibia in depth, but I do have a copy of some of the policy for the groups if you want to choose, if you want to choose Namibia. I just want to take you through to... Um, our embassy's mandate and how we came with something called the mandate. We, we, have, we have eight main goals. One of it is to promote, enhance, and maintain cordial relations between the Kingdom of Lesotho, the countries of accreditation, Germany, Austria, France, Monaco, and Poland, to promote foreign direct investment into Lesotho, to increase Lesotho's benefit from international organizations, to increase and maintain the amount of official development assistance into Lesotho. This would have been interesting for the, um, some of the participants yesterday, the discussions about um, aid, trade, donor. But I know that you're going to be part of this now and you're going to be answering that. <laughs> um, to protect and enhance Lesotho's interest, that's us, in the countries of accreditation to foster and enhance Lesotho's positive image in countries of accreditation, to provide consular services for people that want to visit, and the people of Lesotho that are living in the country as well, of where we are based, and to enhance the administrative capacity of the mission. That is a very, for us, very important, always to increase our skills, our knowledge as um, administrators, so we can enhance our capacity, overall capacity. Okay, we're about to break into groups. Um, I would really prefer it if the interns don't um, stay within one group. You can also spread out, okay, if you would like to. Um, and also, if you can, like Poland, I know you're from Poland. Um, the countries also, please don't stay together, country specifics, all in one group. Um, try and move out into, into different groups. We can maybe just keep two groups here. We will arrange the chairs because when you come back from your group sessions, you will take the floor, one person, so you need to um, have a scribe. Somebody's going to be writing down and somebody else that you're going to choose to um, come back and do the feedback. And what your exercise is, your, your exercise is to imagine you are... I know we have very, very little time for this, but imagine that you are working at a mission, whether the mission is a first world country. Now, you imagine if you were working for, German, for the German foreign ministry and you are based in South Africa. Um, Germany's main mandate in South Africa is different to, for instance, our Lesotho mandate 
in Germany. First and foremost, as Germans, um, it's about promoting goodwill, good ambassadors, um, cultural relations. Of course, they go back later on to the import and the exporting, especially, of course, German products into South Africa, and, but the other way around as well, to keep the, those channels open for South African goods into, into Germany. But very important for the Germans um, is really good relations, the arts, and this is through the arts, and this is through the music, and the language, the Goethe Institute. So you can decide within the group um, which country you would like to choose and imagine based on the points, I will give, it, give you some of the points for your group session. Um, imagine that you have a mandate and you, your country is, you can choose countries from Africa, it will be very important for this group, but you can also choose countries from Latin America, other developing countries, or from Asia. And you can place that country somewhere else. Place them in a first world country. That will be up for this group. It will be really good to place them in uh, the Latin American countries in a first world country somewhere in, somewhere in the world. Okay. And when you come back, the idea is to talk about what do you think your main goals are. Okay. There is something very important if you're going to try to come up with how you're going to do this goal. You have to talk about uh, your, what activities you're going to have. Like we as an embassy... Um, when it comes to consular <laughs> services, for instance, we have to work out what, how we're going to um, achieve to have a good consular. Um, you can also choose, um, you have to come up with objectives. You have to come up with a time frame. And the reason why I want you to choose um, developing countries or even least developed countries like Lesotho is imagine you have very little money. You have very little money as um, your foreign affairs and this embassies that you are now. Um, and how do you manage to liaise with the country where you're based with a smaller budget? So remember that word from yesterday, you have to really keep good and friendly relations in that country and you win good friends, institutions, look, I'm here at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, you win good friends with universities um, and with other international organizations. So you have to imagine you're going to have a relation with them. And how would you do that? Um, if it's not clear to you, I can come to your groups that you're going to break into. Okay. So just one question, mm -hmm. Yvette, 50, please. they're going to have 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 Thank to you. 20 maximum. And then your reporting is only three to four minutes each group. But uh, how many people are we, actually? Is anybody talking? 14. I've left out the embassy officials. We are like 14. Did I count right? <laughs> Fifteen? I didn't see. <laughs> yes. Fifteen. So how many groups are we forming? Okay. Sounds good. Let's group. Um, sorry, how many groups are we? Let's, let's do, let's do um, bigger groups because we're so few people. We'll do three groups. <laughs> You're based in the first world country. That's good. <laughs> good. But choose one, one program, one main core theme. Like, are you going to focus on arts and culture? Are you the arts and culture department in the embassy? Are you the trade department in the embassy? Uh, okay. because, because you'll have to come up with activities and time frames. Maybe? You can be education. Yes. Yes. Education. But education is very broad, huh? Yes. <laughs> education is broad because it cross-cuts other sectors like industry because you have to build up the capacity in your yeah. country educational-wise, you know, by training. But you guys were fast. You're Guatemala? Yeah. Where's and the Spanish-speaking people here? Yeah, and we're based in London, yeah? You. Oh. No, you have to choose another one. They, sorry, they're based in London. I'm sorry to do that to you. That's fine. Actually, why not? You know what? You can be based in London. Why not? Okay, we're based you're can, in France. Because you're not That's the same fine. country. They're in Nigeria, based in London. So you got Guatemala based and in London. London. Be in London. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what you're going to ask the Majesty for. Okay. <laughs> All right, so and sometimes I jump in for education as well.
So you have to decide how big is your embassy, how many people are working for you, and which department are you? Are you economics? Are you trade? Or are you... You trade? So you, you have to decide. <laughs> because... Okay, it's important. Yeah, economy, yeah. The reason why uh, I'm asking you which one, which desk you are, you have to come up with the program. Okay. What are you going to be? What do you want to do in England yeah, as an embassy? Yes. So I'll choose one, one office. How many people are you now? This is you, huh? This is your department. You are all these people. You, you must imagine that actually for Nigeria, it's true. Nigeria has big embassies. The Sutu, we only have ten people working in the whole embassy, and we're covering seven countries. So. You, and Nigeria, they have, um, you know, South Africa, we're looking at, if I'm not mistaken, over 40 people working in the, in the mission. Nigeria has more. Because, do you remember, they have 160 million people. The Sutu has 2.1 million people. So, um, yes, have you chosen your department? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, it's wonderful. There's so much. No, because they also, they're choosing something. They're also based in, in England. <laughs> but they're Guatemala. They're Guatemala. So. so don't worry. It's very different. Which, which department are you in the embassy now? Which one have you chosen? Asylum issues. Asylum issues. Oh, you're going to die the asylum? Yes. Okay, uh, um, okay, embassies don't have a, oh, uh, if they're a huge embassy, they'll have something like this, but normally they won't really have it. It'll go in the consular section, consular and immigration, that's the department. So you immigration and uh, consular services. And within this, you, you're going to cover the all. So the people are, which are living, that are from your country, living in that country. Which country are you? Which one? That's good. That's very good. Very dynamic. So who's familiar with human rights and what's happening in Italy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, good luck with your programs. It's, it's hard work. What you have chosen. It's good. Yes, it's hard because it's... Um, because of the media portrayal. So you have to come up with programs of how you're going to assist the media in portraying a better image of the African migrants that wash up on the shore, you know. So, you know, this is the portrayal you're getting from the media, right? Migrants in boats. And also the trafficking. There's also another big thing from the International Organization for Migrants, uh, you know. They, the, the big one is also human trafficking because of Italy. Italy has this as a big problem. Mm. Okay. Shu, I'm, on, I'm interested in your programs. You're, you need to come up with um, how, how, as an embassy, what do you want to do, actually? Remember, you, you have to maintain good relations, huh? else they'll kick you out. You'll become persona non grata. And you don't want to become, as an embassy, persona non grata, the whole embassy, um, and the embassy being closed. So you have to think of programs and activities that still maintain good relations with Italy. Remember, you, Libya, you have a long history with Italy. So maybe there is, remember what we discussed yesterday, language, culture. That's also another way you can help bridge those gaps and those divides through language, through learning language together, through celebrating each other's cultures. Shows in the television or in the right, radio, right. And, uh, on the one hand See, she's discussing at the programs. So you can jot them all down. That's good. And every idea is good. I mean, the point is, as an embassy, you take much longer to work out a program and an activity because you really have to go back. First of all, when you come up with the date, you have to see if the date is suitable for the country where you're in. If there's any public holidays that they're having, if there's any religious holidays. I mean, nowadays, we also have to think of a global level. We have to think of 9-11 uh, celebrations or other celebrations that are happening. 
you know, if there's any Jewish festivals as well, so that we are still, because we also have to be friendly with not just Italy, where we are in, but we, we also friends with other country embassies, you know, from other countries. And remember, Libya is part of a block. Remember we discussed that yesterday, the ambassador mentioned Southern African bloc as good friends. We work very closely with all Lesotho, with all the Southern African countries. We meet regularly. We have once a month meetings with them. And we even have joint programs. We celebrate our cultures together and even we even have trade promotions together as a bloc. The East African countries do that too and the um, West African countries as well. They celebrate, they do things together. And then we also meet as African ambassadors as groups. This is not once, um, we, they try and do it every second month, the African ambassadors on a high level. And then once a year you have a big event, especially on Africa Day, you know, in May. Then we have. So, yes, think of your programs. But it's a, it's a very, it's a sensitive issue you've chosen, but it's a very important issue. Because don't forget, don't forget you are now, huh? You today. So Libya is in a transition store. So maybe you're working towards your election. And I don't know what Italy will offer on educational capacity level when it comes to the monitors for the new election, the electoral commission. These are all things as an embassy that we need assistance also with when the country hasn't had such structures in the country. Hmm? Okay. Are you t you're still tourism? No, we are economic. Okay. That's good for Guatemala, no? Yeah. You all know Guatemala's Im uh, export and imports already? What they import and what they need? No. You're just coming up with some hypothetical. That's good. How are you all doing? Who's your scribe? you scribing. Mm -hmm. And who's reporting? Yeah. Very good. You can read her handwriting? <laughs> but you're, you, you've stayed with arts and culture. That's good because they've changed now. They now trade economics. Hello, groups. Time is up. You now need to start choosing your spokesperson and giving your feedback and your reports. So, time's up. Okay, we have three countries we have Guatemala. They were sitting in the front. Uh, we have in the back, we have Libya. And they are based in Italy. The embassy, the Guatemalan embassy is still in the UK. They're in the UK and we had Nigeria. Nigeria is also based in the UK? Yes. Remember, first world countries, so the UK was popular today. Who wants to go first? Guatemala first suggested them, but they've declined. Um, who would like to go first? Oh, thank you. Nigeria. Okay, we are a Nigerian um, embassy located in the UK, and we have three objectives. The first one is huh? the first one is um, to improve perception of the Nigerian perception and understanding of, the, of Nigeria in the in the culture and need some help. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's. Yeah, Im yeah, improved perception and understanding of Nigeria and Africa through promotion of arts and culture. And mm -hmm, I can, yeah. Thank you. The second one is to promote Nigeria as a tourist uh, destination. And the third one is to improve investment in arts and culture in Nigeria. So for that purpose, um, our activities are going to be basically directed to arts, music, movies, but we are planning to have um, seminars, discussions. Um, we are intending to have a week, a Nigerian Cultural Week. Um, also um, have discussions in, in terms of history and have a special culinary festival so we can have this exchange of the Nigerian cuisine. Also, press conferences uh, related to different activities, the activities we're going to have uh, located in the UK. And um, we're going to be um, 
enforcing the idea of uh, visiting Nigeria and its tourist uh, attractions. So for that purpose, we have a time frame of 11 months. We're um, suggesting to have all these activities going on in December, more or less. And basically, that's our, that's our, that's our mm -hmm. proposal. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have questions for Nigeria based in the UK, how they plan, how much money they have? They haven't said how much is their budget for that department. They also haven't told us how many people are working. Uh, are they also going to include, Ni Nigeria has a very big diaspora living in England. Are you going to include your diaspora to help you with those activities? Do you have a question? She has a question for you. So I've got a question for you about the seminars and the conferences, um, what you were talking about. Uh, so for, for uh, which class of the society would you like to organize these seminars and conferences? That's my question. Mm -hmm. So for everybody or? Mm. Many of you which can classes answer, answer the question. Maybe you can go. Uh, okay. I was also in the group that's <laughs> on this side. Um, we we uh, wanted to plan one week in the before Christmas, and like um, it should be a culture week of Nigeria, and everybody will be included. Oh. Everybody will be invited, and for sure for the investments in arts and culture, we would like uh, people with uh, <laughs> who invest with their money. You know, <laughs> yeah, but it's for everybody. Any more questions for Nigeria? In addition to what she has said, the press conference is uh, designed to bring you know journalists who help us who help us uh, sensitize you know the general public in the UK about the activities of Nigeria. So in that way, Nigeria will be you know a tourist destination. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to the next country. Guatemala? Who's your, who's reporting? Who's giving? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hola. Hello, hello, hello. Hello? Is it on? No. Press the button. Press the button to click. Now you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. How many of us know Guatemala? I haven't. As in like, not to actually visit, but just to know where it is located. Oh, okay. Yeah? Okay. South America, more towards the Caribbean, in the sun. So that's where we are. <laughs> and uh, we're a developing country, um, a former colony of Spain. Uh, we're a sunshine country. We have a lot of rainfall and um, peace, peaceful, happy people. And um, so, we, I represent our embassy in the UK. So we are based in London, and we work on the economic desk. So we have objectives that uh, we are mandated um, to by our um, head office. And um, in a nutshell, um, these are our objectives here in the UK. Uh, first and foremost is investment promotion. Huge opportunities um, for British companies. Uh, we have a lot of uh, wood, we have good rainfall, there's so many opportunities. Uh, we have um, suspected oil deposits. Okay. So um, a lot of opportunities for willing um, investors to come and explore. Um, Another important thing is to harmonize our trade regimes. Um, in other words, the tariffs, the barriers to trade, try to harmonize and make it easier for Guatemalan exporters to export to the UK, to make it easier for us to export from the UK. Um, another important aspect of our mission is skills and technology exchange. Um, we have a lot to learn from the British, 
Um, and so we are working to get um, our universities to cooperate more with uh, leading British universities uh, to cooperate in the area of uh, scientific research and so on and so forth. Um, our other important aim mission here is to raise um, to raise Guatemala's profile, you know, not just in the UK but all over Europe. We feel so many, so many people know very little about Guatemala, uh, this wonderful country with so much potential. So we are we're here to help rebrand Guatemala. Um, you know, they can come for the sun, you know, the beaches. So, and also we have a lot of educated um, workforce. People don't know all these things. Company executives don't know all these things. So that is our, our, our mission uh, here to do that also. Another important thing is to, um, to help with, to strengthen our, our alliance at um, international forums like the World Trade Organization, you know, to, to be in the same voting block with the British, um, and other partner countries so that our voices can be heard and that um, the things that we believe in for the developing country, we can have partners who help when, when, when we do the voting. Um, also, quite importantly, is export promotion. I've hinted a little bit about it, but we, need to, we feel that the British are not importing enough of our products, and we feel that could be, you know, could be strengthened. Um, Lastly, is the, the fair trade market. There's a growing awareness in the world, a growing consciousness about fair trade. And it started right here in the UK. And a lot of British companies um, are doing very good trade in the fair trade market. And we felt we could learn from them. Um, we could help our country, our, 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 our entrepreneurs to qualify for the fair trade label. And what, what a better place. There's no better place to, to do that than here in the UK. So basically, that's our <laughs> humble m uh, objectives there. That, that's our mission here in the UK, and that's all we have to say. Thank you. And we invite you all to come and visit Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> OK, questions for Guatemala? Nigeria, you don't have questions for Guatemala? Yes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> activities? Okay, specifically, um, we are working with the Fair Trade Organization um, to send people, and also um, we have selected a few British companies that operate in the fair trade market to come to, to go to Guatemala and help run workshops there to help Guatemalan entrepreneurs qualify, adjust their business practices so that they can qualify for the fair trade label. So that is our mission in the, in the next eight months, that's what we'll be working on. You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions for Guatemala? Then we'll move on to, um, who's the last country? Libya. Yes. Libya, based in Italy. Are you still doing the reporting for them? No, she wrote uh, because she had the, the last. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You must introduce the issue. It's a very strong issue. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry. Yes. Okay, um, I'm representing my fellow Libyan delegates. We are based in Italy. And our main theme is for, is for us to cater for the illegal immigrants coming from Libya, coming into Italy. And our programs, we have two main programs that we want. That's uh, firstly fighting the bad image that Libya has been portrayed in the media. Also, sorry. Oh, he, he's videoizing <laughs> you. Everyone's being so. Okay. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon everyone. I'm representing our Libyan, my fellow Libyan delegates and our mission is based in Italy. Um, 
as I was saying, our main theme is to cater for the illegal immigrants that are coming into Lib and that are coming into Italy from Libya due to the uprising. As we all know, we've had a quite controversial and yet with very negative impacts and political uprising in Libya. And most of our people have been migrating to Italy illegally. So we have three main goals, which are to liaise with the Italian government, to at least acknowledge or grant refugee status to, our, to the immigrants or to the illegal immigrants coming into Libya. And secondly, um, to process legal Libyan documentation for the immigrants, because mostly some of them, when they, come, when they come through, they don't even have any documentation, any identification of who they are, except that you can tell maybe they're Libyan out of, of maybe just noticing their physical features. And thirdly, perception management. Already the picture that has been portrayed about Libya is negative, and we'll have to work extra hard to be able to maybe change the view, the way people will view Libyans. And so, um, w our time frame is a year, and our budget, we're hoping to get maybe at least 50 million from our government, considering that our frozen funds or frozen monies have been released now, or are partly are being released part by part. So we're hoping, we're hoping to be able to get much money from the government. And our activities, firstly, we need to have an educational, cultural festival. Okay, okay, maybe that one will come last. Firstly, we need to integrate with other countries, neighboring countries, in particular Italy, regional countries on the northern side, to be able to accommodate Libya, firstly on the table, just as diplomats, to be able to share what our country has been experiencing and what is going through now. And then we're up to a, a, program, a media program showing an, uh, Italian TV, television stations or being shared on Italian radios on what Libya was before and what we went through and where we are going. As some might know, in, Libya was one of the most advanced African countries, technologically, um, scientifically also, and our social welfare status was quite good, despite maybe the political situation. And so that's the main thing we want to show the world or Italy, that in as much as we have these refugees coming in, we are not bringing them to stay. We just want to gain our ground, be able to rebuild our infrastructure, develop ourselves, into that social state that we had before and be able to come back and we will take back our people with time. So we're hoping in, <laughs> if we get all the, the funds that we require, then we will be able to take back our people back to Libya. And it might be a place that actually Italians will end up migrating to. And um, we're also going to share on media what Libya itself is going to be able to offer. So the same things that we're saying, scientifically, I Libya was quite advanced, a fairly advanced country, and technologically as well. So Italians will also have something to gain from them. That's what Libya has to offer when we are able to get our own footing and be able to stand. And during this year, we also have hope to host an, an educational cultural festival and we hope to be able to use our prominent or the Libyan prominent musicians or artists who will be able to perform, but their performances are not just going to be about pop mu their type of pop music, but mainly sharing our culture, mainly sharing how you should view um, Libyans, how you should understand Libyans from where they've been coming from, from where they're going, and from what they've been through. And we also hope to take advantage of the religion, religious culture, or relig the culture of religion between Italy and Libya. As you know, Libya is also Muslim, and as our as the main Muslim holiday or time period for the which they, we call Ramadan comes through, we hope to take advantage of that so that maybe it's a cleansing process, or yeah, a cleansing process from the past or the yeah chaos, chaotic past of Libya coming in through, and we hope Italians, also part of the same religion, will be able to carry us through that time. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that was very, very dynamic. It's dynamic, very dynamic, how you all embraced your countries and you were the diplomats for those countries you were representing. Who has questions for Libya? Okay, Nigeria. Uh, the Libyan Embassy in UK, the 
uh, issue you want to deal with is uh, the problem of immigration, illegal immigrants. At the time, there is crisis in Libya, no legitimate government. The area of funding, I thought you would have uh, approached uh, some international agencies, donor agencies, humanitarian agencies like uh, the Red Cross to help deal with the problem of you know, illegal immigrants and also uh, get some funding. Because at the time, you questioned your government was not stable. There was no legitimate government that could give you the kind of money that you need to manage the crisis. Thank you. Do you want to respond to that, Libya? Any of the other Libyan diplomats want to respond? A question. Can you please explain that again? Just don't really understand the question. I was just looking at her, the, where she said she was going to source funds. Mm. She said the source of funding would, would be the Libyan government to deal with the illegal immigrants in Italy. Okay. I'm saying at the time of the crisis, there was no stable government in Libya, and perhaps it would, it would, be, it would be difficult for you to get funding. So I, I'm suggesting, instead of relying on the Libyan government, it should have been you approaching Humanitarian agencies like the Red Cross to help manage the problem. Oh. Yeah. And do you accept Libya? Um, we do accept, thank you, yes. But then, like I was saying, uh, remember now there's a transition government. There was, there's a government now, though it's a transition government, and funds have been released or are being released in part. The funds that were frozen. From the, for the, from the previous Libyan government are released now. So that's what we're saying. We hope our government will be able to give us that part of that money also. But yes, we will request for international organizations to help us. Thanks. Yeah, I accept her uh, option because uh, not just France, but uh, many European countries has just accepted, for example, Hungary too in August, the new government. And I really think that um, we are Libyans. We have to... Um, we have to manage the, the new government of Libya, um, which will be democratic, which is democratic. And um, on the other hand, we can uh, make relationships with the international organization of migration who are, um, who are helping uh, illegal migrants to, to, to find a way to get back home or to be integrated in Italy. So I think uh, we can make it. That's very good. Remember yesterday's discussions, uh, unfortunately, I only was in yesterday, but I heard that dynamic about, uh, if you remember that, about the trade, about the aid, and being dependent on aid. Mm -hmm. And I think Libya, because they know they have, they have this unfrozen money, it's not just um, the oil, but uh, the pipelines being rehabilitated, but they have money that's been, that they can also access. Okay. Well, this, this has been really, am it's really amazing for, for us, for the um, embassy officials that are here today as well, to, to see this dynamic, for you to be involved and become a country, you know. You, we have very little time, but the scribes that have written, if you, if you would like, either I, we will collect them now, and either the ICD interns will type them up, or if you would type it up and then email it, to the ICD and to copy me as well. And then we'll, I'll give you a report if you're interested in a report. And you are most welcome to get hold of us at the embassy if you want to get hold of other embassies, especially our Southern African embassies. And because of those regional cooperations we have with SADC, we are very close, the community, the embassy community. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Yvette. I hope you have enjoyed this lecture plus a workshop, slightly different this week for the ICD leadership delegates, but most enjoyable. Thank you very much, Yvette, Thank on you. behalf of ICD.